What is up fam? Hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to my life movie. Today we are en route to some different locations doing a little sightseeing too. If you watch some of my previous videos, you know that a lot has changed throughout what we have had planned when it comes to road trips that can happen a lot but this road trip is a little unique you know what's going on in our world today a lot of that's been happening we had some places scheduled and then we we get to the place and there's protesting going on outside so it's a little noisy you know of course some other dangerous things we were pretty close not long ago to like gunshots or flashbangs something that the police was uh, I don't know if it was the police or not. It could have been uh, a riot or something, but I, I do have that. It's in my last, uh, maybe my last two videos or whatever, but I have V here with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave you right there. A lot of you have been saying that V should have his own YouTube channel or her YouTube channel. I potty trained V, by the way. V stands for Violet, by the way. She's a vi Violet Indian ringneck parrot, in case you're wondering. Where are you going? Getting so adventurous. Your cake so adventurous. Come on. Come on. Good baby. Good baby. So today we're in Connecticut, really close to the Annabelle Cemetery. And of course, where if you watch the, the Conjuring series of movies where Ed and Lorraine Warren are buried. And the last time we came at night, well, it was the first time ever that we ever visited the it's called the Stepney Cemetery, right? Mm -hmm. We get there and we hear somebody screaming for their life in the woods. We had to call the cops and we, we never found out exactly what we were hearing. Uh, there was no news on it. Chances are the cops went in the woods and found nothing. So we're gonna go over there and I mean, may, maybe there were disembodied sounds we heard. I mean, I don't know. I've never heard anything like that in my life. We were, thought we were like trespassing the way he was like, what are y'all doing out here? And we told him and I was like, we're allowed to be out here, right? I was like, it says that it's open 24 hours. He was like, yeah, I wouldn't be out here this late though. <laughs> Yeah, the cop was even scared. It is a haunted cemetery. It's a cemetery where Ed and Lorraine Warren would go to frequently. And there's another cemetery, I might take you there in a little bit, that we completely missed. It's another cemetery, not far away from the Stepney Cemetery, where Ed and Lorraine Warren used to do investigations as well. And supposedly there's a lot of Confederate War soldiers buried there. Uh, soldiers from the Revolutionary War buried there. It's got a lot of history. There's a woman ghost that can be seen there and I guess she goes between the two cemeteries. She goes to the Union Cemetery and then the Stepney Cemetery. So we're going to go find that uh, maybe uh, today during the day. Find something to eat and then we're going to hit these places up at night too. What if we hear screaming again? Oh, it looks good. I hung it up. Oh, look, we're hooking up V's little little travel taxi. Here, V, look. You want to go poop? Not Mom, in here, I just <laughs> Mommy it. just made it nice. You know V's gonna go poop in there. Not yet though. But we got you some new toys. Just give it like 15 minutes. I got my bird potty trained. So every time V comes with me, like I put him in the cage or her in the cage and then he'll go poop. And it's, I have it timed like every half an hour. So maybe 20 minutes. Hi sweet baby. Come on, what you got? What is it? Is what are you doing? Noise? What are you doing? Tiffany got so excited. She was looking through her luggage. And she found a sweater because she didn't pack a sweater. Oh, it's a jacket. She got so excited, had the jacket on, and then she gets outside, and I almost feel like you were disappointed that it I wasn't was. cold. <laughs> For once. It's actually really warm here in Connecticut. Well, really close to the town of Monroe. What's the name of the town we're in right now? Um, Bridgeport. I know it's not far from Mystic, Connecticut. Yeah, it's Bridgeport. Bridgeport, okay. That's where we're at right now. Having a great time. I am, have, I, at first, because we've been gone for several days already, we only really recorded one investigation so far. I mean, we tried, it, attempted to. Up. Yeah, just everything keeps getting messed up and it's never happened like this, but it's okay. I, you know, it's something that I guess hap, has to happen in our American history right now for, for things to change. And I, I guess change is happening. I know you guys want some new videos and I'm trying. I'm really trying. I know that there's a lot of a lot of people upset with me. They're like, why are you even out right now? You know what I mean? You shouldn't be. It's too dangerous. But we're trying to we're really trying to avoid big cities. We're I mean, even where we're going right now, it's like a population of like maybe a thousand people. It's it's very low population. Uh, not not too many people there. This makes me feel really good. They are, they're doing things right here in Connecticut. See? It's a worker out there wiping down the oh and my gaslight just came on but they're wiping down the 
the gas nozzles. What are you doing, V? That's a sweet baby. Yes, you are. You're a sweet baby having a party all on my hand. <laughs> yep. She's about to have a, a nice dirty party on your hand. Hopefully not. No. Pretty Do sweet. your little whatever. It's like you crazy. I'm looking like, please. I could do better. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Connecticut. A lot of beautiful homes. Very charming state. Out of every state that we've traveled to so far, like what would you say is your favorite? I don't know. It's a toss up between Vermont and Connecticut. Okay. I would have to agree with her. She hasn't been to Utah yet. I'm always raving about Utah. I went for, I think it was two years ago, maybe three years ago, I went and did some investigations out there with a YouTuber that I haven't talked to in a really long time. I have no idea what even happened to him. Good guy too. His name was Paranormal Tyler and right outside of Salt Lake City and it was beautiful. All right fam, so we decided to make a quick pit stop. We're in Bridgeport. I believe that's where we're at. We're in downtown right now. Right behind me is a very famous and abandoned factory, also known as the Remington Arms Factory. Ghost Adventures did a episode here, I believe maybe last year. I'm just finding out that in December of last year, somebody was found murdered inside of the Remington Arms Factory. What really stinks is, uh, and this is probably one of the reasons why a place closed down, there was tons of accidents where people were were dying left and right here. Um, I believe somebody was like melted to death. Um, there's a lot of stories that you can catch online um, of the Remington Arms Factory. But yeah, there was quite a few accidents. Is the place cursed? You know, like maybe the Winchester, you know, they were, they were producing guns here that kill people. So there's a possibility. There's there's some blood on, on their hands, of course. Is that a doggy door? Whoa, this place is massive though. So much happening here. Uh, we're trying to get a hold of somebody so we can get permission to go in. Well, don't want to go in here illegally. Uh, there's signs all over the place that says no trespassing. And I mean, we're right in the middle of a neighborhood too. Well, this place is really big. Almost makes me want to watch the Ghost Adventures episode. I mean, this place goes back over there. It's massive. I love the old school Civic Si. Look at that. I think that was called the electric blue color. Love that color. It's like a blurple. It's like V. So we got a hold of, or we're trying to get a hold of somebody. His name is Max, right? Yeah. So we can get permission to go in. Waiting for the voicemail again, so I can write down the number. Okay. And email address. We'll fill you in. All right, fam, so we just got off the phone with the city of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and it's a good thing we called, and we didn't just go in there. I mean, like a couple years back, I mean, I used to explore anywhere, like anywhere where it was like haunted, abandoned, like I would just pop up and be like, here I is, <laughs> but not the greatest idea. I guess they're doing some environmental investigations right now there, and it's not, it's not healthy to be there. It's, it's very unsafe. And <laughs> he said, six months, <laughs> the soonest we can get there to film a video would be six months from now. So, eh. But at least I got to show it on the outside. Yeah. <gasps> we do have a hospital we can go check out, though. Yes, but I wonder, you know, I wonder if I should fly my drone in there. I don't know if I could fly a drone here. It's, it's a pretty good-sized city, kind of far up the street, but I wish I would have thought of that. Just fly my drone inside there. I'm not sure. Oh, they're gonna demo that house. They're gonna completely destroy that house. Probably gonna build something new. This kind of reminds me of where I used to live in upstate New York. I love that mural. It's pretty cool. They're demoing that too. Maybe they're putting a store here. I've never seen that before. They have like a cell phone antenna or a tower. Like, it's like the tip. And they have it attached to a building. See that? Mm -hmm. That means I could probably live stream from here. Let me see. No. Must not be T-Mobile. It's only two bars. I've, if you didn't know, like, one of the reasons I don't do more live streams is because you need, like, full cell phone reception. Hi, I'm a tourist. 
from Florida. People like staring you down. We don't belong here. Just want to explore your area. So this hospital is an hour away. Okay. I'm trying to find some other places to explore. This place looks legit. Sounds like a weed whacker. All right, fam. So if you're familiar with the Ed and Lorraine Warren, you know, story like the, of course, Conjuring, Annabelle all comes to mind. But this is the town that they lived in town that they did a lot of their own paranormal investigating in fact the cemetery that they're buried at like i was mentioning they used to do ghost hunting there as well when uh i can't believe it's almost been like a year but when we went into that drugstore remember we got that fan yeah we talked to a lady that worked there at the drugstore i don't know if it was a walgreens or what it was but we mentioned lorraine and she said that she just loved Lorraine and she would go into the drugstore all the time and she would always be dressed really nice. This is Lorraine's street. Is that Nallwood? Are you sure? Yep, that was it right there. Oh, it because is. remember we parked there to try to get your drone. Yes, and I never got to, did I get drone no, shots? No, you didn't. So I wanted to get some drone shots of the Ed and Lorraine Warren house. This is the house where they have the Warren Museum there, the Haunted Museum. It was one of, one of the first haunted museums, probably the first haunted museum ever. I'm gonna take you and give you a tour of the Stepney Cemetery. And then we're gonna go back and see what the Warren Museum looks like. And this is where Ed and Lorraine Warren used to live. Now, supposedly it was a haunted house as well. It's been a year, I can't believe it. But that's the cemetery that we went to at night. That's the Stepney Cemetery. And I don't know where the Union Cemetery is though. It's supposed to be up here. So Ed and Lorraine, they're there. Yep, that black one right there. That's, that's Ed and Lorraine Warren's. And the screams were coming from there. Yeah, there were screams coming from it there. We can never figure out. I'm still to this day people ask me like did you ever find out cops never told us so where's the Union Cemetery? Um, I've been here and it's like up the street from there because if this ghost lady travels between they say that if you drive down this road you can like see her on the road sometimes too mm. That's so scary. Ooh, imagine if we did an investigation on this road, but yeah, this is where Ed and Lorraine Warren used to live It's Monroe, Connecticut. It's very pretty very country it's about a 30 minute drive from where we were at in Bridgeport. You know, if you live out here in the country, it's not not that far from civilization. You know, if you're into shopping malls, things like that. Plenty here though. I'm not seeing the cemetery. Maybe it's maybe it's the other way. I'll look at it. All right, fam, so we are back at the Stepney Cemetery. We're having a hard time finding the Union Cemetery. It's crazy because when I came in and visited the Stepney Cemetery almost a year ago, a lot of people mentioned like, hey, it's right up the road. How come you didn't visit? We, we just drove all up and down the road. We couldn't find it. So we did do some research online and there's another cemetery also known as the Stepney Village Cemetery. I don't know if maybe the former name was the Union Cemetery there. But anyways, a little bit about Stepney Cemetery it was established in 1794. A lot of the headstones that maybe you can't see, I mean, like some of these right here, look, this is 1860. That one's probably from the 1700s or early 1800s. Wow, that one's broken. I wonder if somebody vandalized some of these. Oh wow, look at this one completely. Wow. Tree? You can't even read this one. <laughs> Bless you. This has never happened to this camera before. Like my screen just turned off. The camera will sometimes to save battery will turn the back screen off, but you can tap on it and it turn back on. And look, I'm tapping on it. Is it still recording? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's recording. That's weird. Never happened before. Well, anyways, if it's still recording, that's great. I, I got V with me. I figured we'll share V with the the warrens i know that lorraine was uh was an animal lover and she loved she loved her flowers too supposedly ed would every morning go for a walk and he would pick flowers for for his wife so sweet that they, they were like the ideal old school american couple you know the the couple that you always wanted to to resemble you know if you were in a relationship maybe you and i are the <laughs> The Ed and Lorraine. The Ed and Lorraine Warren. Of I, we could, they could never be duplicated. 
but I we mean, are the Omar and Tiffany though. Hey, you remember when we? Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. But you remember when we were here? We played their. They have a love song, and I played it for them. It was real, real cloudy, and all of a sudden, when I started playing their love song, the sky opened up, and it was like a ray of light just shining down just on us. I think I documented that too. Yeah, you did the same one. So here it is right here. Looks a little different from a year ago. This is where Ed and Lorraine Warren are buried. Oh look, the screen came back. It is recording. Oh, okay. That's weird. Right as I'm coming here to visit them, the, the screen automatically just starts working again. Is that the rose we left last time? Oh, right maybe it is. We did leave a rose. Mm -hmm. It was uh it was like right here. Mm -hmm. I wonder if somebody That's like, cool. oh, it's somebody left Christmas. That's a protection crystal right there. Remember in your last vlog too, when you like showed the cat, you were like, Lorraine loved cats. Yes. And somebody pointed out in your video that when you said that, you could hear like a purr in the no. background. Yeah, you didn't see that? No. Yeah, in the vlog, somebody pointed it out or something, I don't know. And then you heard like a purr. A lot of people don't know this. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my, my previous video here, but Ed actually served in World War II. He was in the Navy. And it, it does say it on his headstone too. That's something that I knew before even looking at the headstone. But yeah, I was quickly reminded right there. He was in World War II. Pretty awesome. And this is the name of their song, right? Sunday, Monday, Always? Yes. If you want to look up the song, it look, it was this song was so popular for them. I mean, it's a song that they would dance to. I think that, I forgot what, I think it was one of their, their kids' weddings. They started playing that song and it was like their, I guess it was their last dance, they said. I'm not sure the accuracy on that, but Sunday, Monday, Always. Very pretty song. I believe that song was made for, I think it was made for like people of war. Like the, you know, the wives would see their husbands go off to war and, you know, it was a sad time, you know, during the World War and I mean, even, I mean, any war, any war is sad. Wanna do a quick spirit box? Sure. Can I point out why Lorraine, another reason why Lorraine is so cool? Yeah. She was born on my birthday. Just a different year. We share the same birthday. That's super cool. She's an Aquarius. She's an Aquarius, that's right. That's right, V. Tell him. And Ed is a Virgo? Where is he? September? Yep, September 7th. Got me. Uh, you have to ask Ari on all that stuff. Yeah, September 7th. Wait. Max is September 4th. He's a Virgo. Ed and Lorraine, we came here to say hello to you. Did I say leave? Or leaves? Maybe. We're get, thinking about coming tonight and do a paranormal investigation dedicated to, to you guys because you guys used to come here. Oh yeah? Do you miss ghost hunting? I didn't hook it up to my speaker, so it's hard to hear. Did you notice the tree started blowing when you turned the spirit box on? That's almost like what happened. It's like when when we started doing their, their Sunday, Monday, Always song, it's like we had a lot of activity, you know? We should do that again. We like, should play their song. Like, watching your videos, like it started like, Really? The wind started blowing. That's interesting. I brought you my baby bird so you could say hello. Oh, look, she has a little kitty cat right here. Hey, Lorraine, we know you loved animals. We love animals too. Thank you so much for opening the door for future investigators. Just want to pay our respects. We love you. We miss you so much. Thank you for leaving such a legacy behind for us to us to be a part of you want to go by their house yeah we can go by there too. Right, we're gonna go by the annabelle house hopefully one day we can get permission to go like, back what there. was out there screaming yeah that's what we were hearing screaming you should leave a pop-up for that video in this uh -huh. video so that people can go back and watch like looking there's nothing out there <laughs> remember I was, my whole remember, I was just thinking of that <laughs> so when we heard these screams no we heard gunshots yeah well first we heard screaming uh -huh. and then we heard a loud scream, a gunshot, and a scream. And when we heard that, that's when I was like, "Yeah, I took off." <laughs> I really wish I did care. No, I was like, "Oh, I didn't even care that I'm." Oh, busting you didn't my whole care. Butt. Okay. I was about to leave my whole butt behind. But yeah, we were hearing screaming coming from these woods right here, 
And it was in the summertime last year. Wasn't that like one of your very first times investigating with me? Mm -mm. Yeah, it was. Not investigating. At nighttime. In a cemetery. At okay, nighttime. is that what it was? Yes. She was like, what are you doing? What am I getting myself into here? I was just more concerned. Like, what if somebody was out there, like, being, like, you couldn't Tortured. see in front of you? Like, what if there was, like, this group of people out there torturing this person and they see your giant light? <laughs> it's just like, hey, I we're know. here. Because here's the thing this, this cemetery, and hey, if you're ever in the Northeast, because, I mean, we're not far. I mean, I, I, it's a short drive from New York. Um, I mean, even like Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, we were in Albany yesterday. I mean, it's really not that bad of a drive. Come visit the Stepney Cemetery. It's a pretty cool place, Monroe, Connecticut. If you're gonna drive by the Annabelle or the Warrens Haunted Museum, be very respectful. There's tons of no trespassing signs. You can't go there. I don't even know if Annabelle is still there, but that house is hella haunted. We did a spirit box communication. What? Is that somebody, what? look. Is that there's somebody walking back there, isn't there? Huh? Look on the other. Come here. Oh, you can't see it. There's definitely somebody walking on the other side of those trees. There's a lady in white that appears here, as well as the Union Cemetery. That's why I wanted to go mm -hmm. check that place out. Isn't that where we came in through at nighttime? Yeah. We walked all the way along the whole road of the cemetery. Didn't hear not one single scream. And then the second we walked into that the way. cemetery is when yep. we heard him screaming. I mean, it's right there. It's not like there's a wall. It's just a little faint. But here's the thing, if you're going to come here to Stepney Cemetery, bring a light with you at nighttime because th this isn't lit up like like the Spring Hill Cemetery in Florida, not not lit up at nighttime. It's very dark. Yeah, some bug spray too, but your little phone flashlight, not going to cut it. I mean, it'll work a little bit, but bring a really good flashlight. Francis McAfee, 1867 to 1934. So I called this place the Annabelle Cemetery. Can't remember that name of that video. I did two videos here, one at night, but I feel like we weren't able to do a proper investigation at nighttime because of the screams that we heard it. And it was as soon as we got here. We wanted to keep investigating, but the screams got louder and louder. And then when we heard the gunshots, we heard two gunshots. We figured, hey, we need to call police. There's obviously somebody in those woods. And we never heard anything back. I wonder if somebody was like, oh, what? we need to ask. We're gonna come at nighttime. We're gonna ask the spirits. It's a bee. A bee? Mm -hmm. Where? Right over there in the grass. Oh, well, I'm glad you're bee and careful. But yeah, we're gonna come at nighttime and bring our spirit box and ask what those screams were. What was that? I'm so glad you heard that too. We just heard talking coming from the woods. Hello? box what it was and then it starts talking anybody out there some say that the spirits that we did here too were probably of war like soldiers you know because there's a lot of veterans in here right yeah there's a lot of war soldiers that were buried here and that has been reported here as well there's a lovely yeah. little stone look see right here took my butt away u.s army was it that stone or that stone Oh, no, it's that stone. That stone. Okay. I'm about to leave my whole butt behind. So we are going towards Ed and Lorraine Warren's old home. And it's, it's a very small street. It's a dead-end street. And the house is at the end of the road. I'm sure neighbors really hate people coming down here. I mean, there's only, what, like five houses back here? Uh, maybe seven houses. Look, it, it says museum closed. Police take notice, violators prosecuted. There's even signs on the neighbor's houses over here. Hey, Annabelle, are you here close by? <laughs> Evil. I only know one person, it's a friend of ours, that got to hold. Wait, I don't know if she got to hold the Annabelle doll, but she got to experience Annabelle, the real Annabelle, which is a, an old Raggedy Ann doll. And 
I don't know if it was here. Maybe it was here. And it's my friend Haley Reese. She has a video of the real Annabelle doll. If you want to go look at that video, it's pretty awesome stuff. And they share a lot of the history. But she shared with me a, a personal experience. I'm not sure if she had this in her video that she shared with me. But she told me that there was maybe like 30 seconds to a minute that she just froze as she was, I guess, looking at Annabelle. And something during that moment was telling her to go pick it up. Oh. And hold her. No. And, and she had to like snap out of it. And that, I don't know, I, I believe her. And that doll is pure evil. Whatever was attached to Annabelle, is attached to Annabelle, is pure evil. But it's it's so compelling. It's so, you know, for, for people that are non-believers and, you know, in the spirit world and the paranormal, I mean, that's something, it was so well documented that they made movies off of it, you know? So, is Annabelle real? <laughs> What's attached to Annabelle? Is it the devil? Maybe. Maybe? A demon? You're not allowed to follow us home. Okay, so let's did a little quick spirit box communication. But man, I, I really wish. I tried to get a hold of my friend Haley Reese to see if she had contacts, but I guess her contacts were through Warner Brothers. They're the ones that, and she didn't get paid for that by the way, but they, they just invited her to come along and it was right before Annabelle Comes Home movie came out and they wanted her to promote it on her channel, uh, which I, I thought that was so cool. I would have loved to have been a part of that. You, you know, know, I haven't watched not one of those movies. Why not? Because, right? <laughs> I would love for you to go in there because you want to so bad. Yeah, I do want to go in there so bad. So there's Annabelle's house. There must be a lot of people that trespass here. No outlet, no turnaround. If you were not invited, you're trespassing. But it's like, how are we supposed to know that there's no turnaround unless we get here to turn around? Yeah. <laughs> I would love to talk to one of these neighbors to get their stories on. Uh, not just the hauntings, but the people that come here. Because, you know, after all the movies, the Conjuring movies, Annabelle and all that, Monroe, Connecticut got put on the map. What a really cute neighborhood, by the way. Hey, remember when we came through here at nighttime and there was, it was almost like a, a coroner. Yeah, I think somebody died the night that we came to visit, there was I like believe. Forensics vans and stuff. Was it? Did somebody get murdered? There's some of those police cars everywhere. And it was right at nighttime. I mean, did did that that Annabelle doll have something to do with cursing this this little neighborhood back here? Well, who knows? Isn't it locked in a box or something? Isn't it supposed to be like in it's a supposed box? to be? It's supposed to always be locked. But I don't know. I don't know where Annabelle is today. I don't think she's there. But I I think I mean <laughs> that whole house was haunted. Not only because of Annabelle, but the Ed and Lorraine Warren. They brought all their haunted objects that were given to them. And it was in the basement there. The Annabelle Comes Home movie was based off of that house, I believe. So we're gonna go explore somewhere else. We're gonna attempt to explore somewhere else. And you're invited to come with us. I appreciate y'all being here. We just drove like hour and a half. We're very disappointed. But I mean, we should have known, should have known. Um, it's closed and it does say police take notice state property I was really excited about this because there's an abandoned TB hospital a TB sanatorium here which you can go on because it's on state property it's it's on a state park it is haunted we're gonna go check it out it closed at five so we got here just in time maybe tour it a little bit I guess they have had some problems here with people coming from out of town and not being kind to like the property too, like all the abandoned buildings. People have like come and set their trash cans on fire and uh, broken windows and stuff, which is, gosh, people stop doing that. Look at the water over there, it's so pretty. I was hoping we could see the sanatorium. You can a little bit, I just seen some of it. You can see it? Yeah, well, like you're. Oh yeah, wow. Look how pretty. This is gorgeous. 
perfect weather for like jet skiing or boating. I can see one of the neighbors yelling at me. What are you doing here? And there's it's all roped off. Private property signs everywhere. You see this black fence? Yeah. So behind that fence, I think is part of the the state park. Yeah, there's a building right there that's like abandoned and like it's the same colors as the thing. So look. So when you go up in between these houses, oh, there's people in the yard too. <laughs> they watching us. What a view! Look at that. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can. There's not very many places that I can fly my drone. I've been looking. I mean, there's power lines everywhere. Where there is ways to get my drone up in the air, there's tons of no parking signs. The neighbors are outside, and we don't want to be too suspicious or more suspicious than we already are. So I found this area here. I mean, there are some power lines there we got to be careful with. But if I go straight up, we're good. I'm not going to be worried about running into trees or anything. And the sanatorium is right over there so much to see we can't explore on foot but we can explore through the air let's do this about flying a drone and getting yelled at which that's that's happened to me many times by like neighbors it's best just to go straight up as high as you can that way neighbors don't hear the drone because sometimes it can like make noise and then people like I don't like what happened the other day we were, we were flying by that castle that I, I showed you I did some drone shots there and one of the neighbors came out he was like you know I'm, I'm outside taking a piss and this drones like you know looking down at me I'm like brah I, I'm, I promise you, my drone probably didn't even see you. You know, and if I did catch you taking a piss, nobody wants to see your wiener on YouTube, okay? Why are you Including outside me. peeing when you have a That's whole what house? I said too, I'm like, why are you outside? But he, he rolls up next to me, doesn't know who I am, and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, who are you? Like, <laughs> well, like why are you asking me what I'm doing? If you're flying your drone you're and, and you're not in a warning zone, you're, you're not breaking the law, you're not doing, people don't own the air. Like you can fly a drone over someone's house, no problem. I mean, you know, there's there's some stipulations to that. You don't wanna, you, it's just all about common sense. I mean, I've been approached with, with guns before too. I was somewhere in Tennessee and I was flying in like the country and some neighbors came out and they were like, you know, uh, we're gonna shoot that drone down if you don't bring it down. And I've, I've had things like that happen. It's like, dude, if you shoot my drone down, like you're gonna be in big trouble. Like that's that's breaking the law. You know, I mean, you can't shoot somebody's drone down. Plus, like, good luck trying to shoot a drone that's 400 feet in the air. <laughs> like, you have to be a super marksman to be able to shoot down a drone. But don't worry. Like, you're not breaking the law if you're flying a drone. You know what I mean? If, if you're in a warning zone, yeah. If you're flying at the airport or you're, like, literally in someone's backyard, yeah. But... And that's why they create drones. If it was... Well, some people have given drones a bad name. You know, they've... they have used them for spying and but here's the thing like you can't you would have to have a super zoom lens to use a drone as a spy tool the lenses on them are meant to capture like portraits you know from far away it's not meant to like zoom in and see somebody peeing you know what i mean but yeah that guy was a real winner i, I guess they the people at the castle were like you know huh like yeah they i don't think they cared for him much either but here is the ss oh my gosh tv or oh, wait is there another name for like something that goes in the air? Because SS is like for, you know, like water. This is the SS Omar Gosh TV though. Because uh, it goes over water sometimes. Yeah, this is a Phantom 4 Professional Obsidian. Great drone. It does night shots, which is great too. I love this drone. And believe it or not, that sanitarium or sanatorium, I don't know if it's sanitarium or sanatorium. That hospital, the TV hospital that you just seen in, in the video shots, is really far away i mean we're not that close we're how how would you say like maybe a mile and a half two miles away uh, there was a couple times where i lost transmission like i lost a signal of my drone and i had to i mean 
I was inside the car too. I mean, I, if I was outside flying, I didn't want to bring much attention to myself, but I probably could have flew it a little bit further away. But yeah, good stuff. You hear, it sounds like styrofoam or something. like a little mouse. She does sound like, hi, Violet. She's sleeping. Oh, she's sleeping? Yeah. Or he's sleeping? You just, like his eyes went. <laughs> hi, sweet baby. Now she's whining. Oh no. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Hi, sweet baby. Oh. <laughs> She's like whining like a little baby. Violet is spoiled. Like, Violet is always with us. Like, this is the first time we put her in there because, you know, he just ate or she just ate. We're trying to get her used to perching, too. And she's doing really good with perching. Hi, little baby. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's so cute. Come hang out with daddy. Well, it's only been a whole 10 minutes since you've been on my shoulder. Come here. Violet loves his little toys. Or her little toys. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Here you go, my sweet little baby. Just like that. So it's been a long time since I've been in a freaking ghost town. Look at this. This is an entire abandoned neighborhood. Now, a friend of mine shared this place with me. Said, hey, Omar, go check this place out. I hear that it's haunted. It's been abandoned. In fact, one of the stories of why it's abandoned is because it's haunted. I'm not sure the accuracy of that. When it comes to abandoned places, it's usually it's usually money related. Nature is swallowing up all of these properties. Yeah, oh, there's one over there too. I didn't even see it. Yeah, there's a house right there. There's gotta be maybe 30 houses in this neighborhood. The streets are all taken over you know by weeds and brush it's so cool look at that place right there yeah there's another one back there yeah that house behind my house hi v what are you doing she's like i want to go exploring too she's on an adventure with us now when we look down this road because there's a couple roads in this neighborhood there's like a ship down there and there's Is a couple houses Is yeah, it? It's that one. yeah we're gonna get out and explore a little bit but that's going to be in a future video uh, right there is a house and that house is wide open we could go right in and explore that house i mean it's just it's a whole neighborhood look house there oh 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 whoa oh wow oh look at that that's insane oh wow there's a house right there is there a house right there there's even an old basketball hoop where a kid used to probably play. There was an old brick house over there. I mean, it's, it's an entire neighborhood. It's been abandoned. So we're like somewhere in like New York or something. And we've been trying to find like just like a hotel or motel, just somewhere to sleep, anywhere. But yeah, we haven't had any luck. We went to I mean, it was like the smallest town ever in New York, and they didn't have any hotel rooms, which I think they did, but I, I think they're on this whole essential workers thing. They just kind of assumed that we weren't essential workers, which I think it's very essential what we're doing. People need content. content. We have about a six hour drive to get back to Virginia, which we have a place to stay there. But I mean, yeah, every single hotel that we go to is unavailable. Oh, yeah, this is Mike Hi Mike, um, do you have any rooms available? We do. Awesome, um, we will see you in like five minutes. <laughs> All right, not a problem. All right, thank you so much. You got it. You forgot to ask how much though. $114. Oh, $114? I've seen it online. <sighs> I'm tired. Thank you for calling. Now this Holiday Inn that we're staying at right now, we've tried pulling into it like three times. 
but it's on like a weird one-way road and the last time I like I thought there was a cop behind me and it wasn't a cop but they were really like I mean I should have just asked them to pull my hair while they were back there you know what you should have did huh? since there was like no cars around we should have just went backwards down the street <laughs> yeah I mean there's nobody out here look at little V sleeping like a big bird this is the lowest parking garage I've ever seen I don't even know if my truck is gonna make it please make it please make it oh okay just don't want to hit a bump oh I'm probably gonna hit that light oh wow what the heck who designed a garage like this look at my antenna it's like just a centimeter away well, oh no, that's not good. No speed bumps. Yeah, I can touch it. I, I was thinking about lifting my truck until I went through this parking garage. So the reason why we missed our turn the first time, well, this is a one-way road right here, but Tiffany and I were eyeballing that donut store over there, 24-hour donut store, and we completely missed turning in here like that so when I noticed I went that way and I couldn't make a right turn because it's a one-way road so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and let you go thank you so much for being a part of these adventures hope to see you soon again before you leave though give me a kiss Peace.